Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. The car you see behind me is a Porsche Cayman 981, but this video is really suitable for the Porsche Boxster and Cayman 981, and maybe some others as well. Uh, we have the dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree, so it does have a fault on the vehicle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to diagnose the fault, I'm gonna show you how to replace the sensor, and then get rid of all of the warning lights on the dashboard. Let's get started. So you will need a scan tool to diagnose which corner is at fault. We recommend the POR version 3.0. Up the link in the description below this video you'll need a flathead screwdriver a replacement sensor i will put the part number to the correct sensor in the description below as well and you'll also need an allen key in particular number five so this is what we've been experiencing on the right hand side here in the uh, the message center we've got a few different messages flashing back and forwards gearbox fault fault parking brake abs psm loss possible to drive on start stop deactivated um, it's quite difficult to keep up with them. In the center, we have the ABS warning light, this one here, we've got the traction warning light, and we've also got a P walking light, a uh, walking warning light. Um, so that's what we've been getting while driving. Now, when hooking the tool, the POR version 3.0 up to the vehicle, uh, we're gonna click into diagnostics, and what it'll do is you can either select your vehicle manually, which I'm going to do. Uh, in doing that, I guess you get to see which of these vehicles it will cover. Um, we're going to go to Boxster Cayman 981 in a second. We'll just scroll through these just to give you a quick idea of what it'll cover. Okay, so we'll go to Boxster Cayman and we're going to go to Control Unit and we need to find the ABS or PSM system. So that's the engine, transmission, airbag. PSM, Porsche Stability Management, okay? So that is like the ABS system, that's their terminology for the ABS system. So if we click into that, we've got a PSM in diagnosis message, we've got a few, few flashing warning lights. That is because we've, we're now interrogating that system. So we're gonna go to read fault code, and it's giving us one fault code. The unique code is 004220, and the description of the fault is rear right speed sensor electrical fault. So. Um, the rear right means as you're sitting in the vehicle, so it's the rear and it's the right hand side. Um, I think they used to put like passenger side or driver side, but it used to confuse people because there were uh, right hand drives and left hand drives, so now I think they just use right and left as you're sitting in the vehicle, okay? So this gives us a good idea that the rear right ABS sensor has failed. Um, another way you can sort of look at that and sort of cross reference double check that is to go to view data and then what you can do is you can view the live data from the ABS sensors as they are happening. So uh, what I would say is you can select all of the ABS sensors, front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and then click done. And then these are the live readings from the ABS sensors. Now at the bottom, rear right, it does say fault. The others say zero. So what you can do is if you've got like a bit of private land maybe, like we have and you've got nobody else around what you can do is or you can sort of get somebody else to do it for you but watch the values watch the zero values as I'm sort of setting off here if you can see them so all of the other sensors are showing at 9 and 10 8 depending on the speed the rear right is still showing a fault and it's not giving any reading at all so that is a good indication that the rear right ABS sensor has indeed failed. And uh, what we need to do now is get that out, get it replaced and put the new one in. So let's get back into the garage and we'll uh, show you how to do that. So the first step is gonna be to take the wheel off. So once we've got the wheel off, I'll show you where the ABS sensor is. So this is the connection to the ABS sensor here. I hope you can uh, focus on that. There we go. And what we need to do is we need to, to unclip this. The, the ABS sensor is actually, so that's the, uh, the hex key to it there. So we need to remove this. Um, the easiest thing to do would be to unclip this connection first. What you need to do is kind of push down on it and then get a flathead screwdriver and push up on that and it kind of unclips it 
and then it should allow you to pull it out. Okay, and this is the ABS sensor that we're gonna change. So then you need to use an Allen key, and then it's just really a case of getting it in here. And this can be quite tricky because this will have been sitting here for quite some time. So after a few minutes of perseverance, I've got it to a point now where it's quite loose. So just need to completely unscrew this. That, there's the screw. And then it's a case of pulling out the ABS sensor. Now you need to give it a bit of a wiggle because it may not come out straight away and you don't want to snap it. And there is the sensor. So then it's just a case of getting your replacement ABS sensor, finding the slot and feeding it through the hole, just in reverse of how you brought it out, lining up the hole for the little bolt and then screwing it all back in. And once you feel that quite tight, you don't want to do it too tight, then you can pop back in the electrical connection and then we can put the wheel back on. Okay, so we're back inside the car now. I haven't started anything up yet because I want to show you this for the first time. So pop the key in, put the ignition on. Let's see what's happening on the dashboard. I'll start the engine. And instantly, we've now got nothing, no dashboard warning lights on there. Um, so it's obviously recognized the new sensor is in there. Sometimes you may need to um, sort of start driving the vehicle for the warning lights to turn off. Sometimes you'll need to actually erase the trouble code. So what I'll do is, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just I'll move this car out of the garage just so we get a bit of better light on the camera work there. Right, so it should be a bit lighter. So we're back with the scan tool now. We're going to go back into diagnostics. Uh, in fact, what I'll do this time is I'll show you the VIN identifier, so it just basically reads the vehicle for you without having to find what information you've got. Um, uh, F1, yes. So we go to control unit and we're going to go back to the PSM. These warning lights are coming on because remember we're, we're interrogating that system. So read fault code, the fault is still there. That's because what we need to do is clear fault memory, click OK to that, erase operation done. So we can go back in, oops, we'll go back in to read the fault code. It's now telling us there are no fault codes. And what we can do is we can double check everything is working fine. Because remember, we can do the live data test. So now it's showing zero at the bottom there. So if I'm to start driving the car, which everything is fine. Don't worry about the flashing warning lights or anything like that. But if you look at all of the values, all of the values are now moving correctly. So that is job done really. And what I'll do is I'll just stop the car here. Um, and I'll, I'll back out of this system just basically to get a clean bill of health back on the dashboard. We've still got the start stop deactivated, but that can happen if the battery is quite low. The battery is quite low on this one, but I've stopped it, started it again, and we've now got a clean bill of health. So if you found this video useful, guys, please make sure to give it a like. If you want to see more Porsche hints, tips, reviews, and guides on this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next video.